الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم رب الشحت صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب العالمين ثم ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone let's try and get to know Surah Al-Jumu'ah the 62nd Surah of the Quran this uh, incredible Surah is just 11 ayat it's very very small and it's part of the Musabbihat series in which Allah declares his perfection in the beginning and that says something about humanity uh, this surah is very very deep and very beautiful and it's got some really interesting unique qualities for instance the first ayah of this surah mentions four names of allah as opposed to a typical standard two names of allah so allah will say al-malik al-quddus al-aziz and al-hakim everything in the skies and the earth declares his perfection it declares allah's perfection who happens to be the sovereign the king al-malik the ultimately sanctified and pure, the holy, that's Al-Quddus. The ultimate authority, Al-Aziz, and the all-wise, Al-Hakim. It's incredible that these four names of Allah then correspond perfectly to the next ayah in which Allah doesn't describe himself. He actually describes what his prophet, his messenger does and what, what he was sent to do. So Allah says, mm-hmm. He says he's the one who sent among the unlettered people, the ummiyin. Uh, he sent among them a messenger who does four things for them. He reads his miraculous signs onto them. He narrates onto them the miraculous signs. He purifies them and he teaches them the law and he teaches them wisdom. Now, if you think about these four things, the first of them was he introduces people to the great signs of Allah, the signs that remind people of Allah's kingdom. And that's the first name of Allah in the previous ayah, the king. A king is known by his signs, by the symbols, by the castles, by the emblems worn by the soldiers, by the marks of his kingdom. And all of this creation is a mark of Allah's kingdom. That's This is Allah's grand kingdom that we witnessed before us. So the reading of Allah's signs and His grandeur and His kingdom are corresponding to each other. The next thing the Prophet does, the Quran says, وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ He purifies them. And you recall the, first, the second name of Allah mentioned in the previous ayah was Al-Quddus, the, the ultimately pure, the, sanct, the sanctified, the holy and the pure. And so the pure, only the pure can, can purify. And so this messenger purifies on behalf of the ultimately pure. And then he says, uh, he teaches them the book which actually in Arabic usage means law he teaches them the law and the law can only come from the authority and that's the third name of Allah in the previous ayah and then he says well, hikmah, wisdom and wisdom can only come from the source of wisdom Allah's fourth name in the previous ayah was Al-Hakim four names of Allah four activities of the Prophet perfectly وسلم, perfectly superimposed on top of each other in such remarkable beautiful language thereafter Allah talks not just about the unlettered who Allah blessed with this this incredible you know knowledge of revelation he says minhum lamma bihim. there are others than them other ethnicities other groups other nations other entire civilizations that haven't joined their ranks yet and he's the ultimate authority that's the favor of Allah he gives it to whoever he wants this is the first passage of the surah in which Allah describes the great gift of revelation and how it formed a nation that who's under Allah's kingdom is actually beyond ethnicity beyond one race beyond one culture and beyond one tradition and it's going to continue to grow and that is the favor of Allah who he gives to whoever he wants this is unlike the, the tradition of Allah with the Israelites the Israelites were one nation continuous prophethood coming within them وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ You know, um, Allah preferred them over all other nations of the world. كُلَّمَا خَلَكَ نَبِيٌّ خَلَفَ نَبِيٌّ The Prophet would tell us every time a Prophet would die, another would take his place. This is what Allah did for them. But this time Allah has sent one single messenger from the line of Ismail alayhi salam who is not a messenger for one ethnicity or one people or one lineage. He's actually for all humanity and it's already been talked about in the sacred text itself. There are others than them. They don't look like them. They don't talk like them and they haven't even joined them yet. In other words, they will join them. And that's the great favor of Allah and Allah is the giver of the ultimate favor. And He's the possessor of the ultimate favor. It's His to give. This is then contrasted in the second passage with those who lost their tr- this true spirit of their faith from within the Jewish tradition. The Israelites, especially the ones living in Medina, are now being called to reprimand. And so Allah Azza wa Jal in this next passage talks about those who carried the Torah, the revelation that they were given on their backs like a mule carries, carries a load on its back. And the idea is not to compare a Jew to a mule. The idea is to carry someone who's been given revelation 
to someone who who only carries it around without ever pondering and using it for reflection, using it to purify oneself and to learn the law and to in, in, to internalize the wisdom. The four things that were just mentioned are the purpose of revelation. And now we're learning there are people who don't live by that purpose and they're for all practical purposes a mule. Don't become like this. Don't reduce your revelation to just something that's celebrated, something that's just superficially recited and nothing else, something that is heard at ceremonious occasions and that's something that's that's all there is or don't turn your book into like just some kind of protection so you put it in the dashboard in your car or hang a couple of verses from the rear view mirror and that's all there is to the, to the book don't do this because there are people before you who reduce the book to this and they're being compared to mules because of it because of the crime they committed with their book that is not a place you want to be. So the first passage is what the relationship of the Ummah with the Qur'an is supposed to be. Why the Prophet came with this revelation and what it's supposed to do for us. In the second passage, Allah describes people whose relationship with their book became artificial. And as a result, they lost their purpose in life. And that's why they didn't want to, they didn't want to leave this world. They forgot, they lost all sight of the fact that life goes on beyond this. There's another life after this. There's a facing of Allah. You know, and they didn't want to face death. And that's why قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ The death that you're running from is going to come into contact with you. It is coming. You can't avoid it. That's what the, you know, what they are told, the ones who lost track of what the book and its purpose was actually supposed to be. You know, it's interesting that in their traditions, almost all mention of the afterlife is gone. Almost all mention of the meeting with Allah is gone. Of almost all mention, if, if not all of it entirely, of the day of resurrection, of hellfire in heaven, completely erased. And so Allah reminds them and says, you can hide it all you want, you are going to be returned to the master, you know, to ila alim al wa shahada, to the knower of the unseen and the seen. فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And he's going to tell you what you used to do. Now there's a third passage of this surah. There's only three passages. And this third passage of this surah seems to be completely unrelated to the first two until you think about it. The third passage is believers, when the call is made for the prayer on the day of Friday, then rush to the remembrance of Allah, leave the business behind. That's better for you if you knew. And when the prayer is done, spread out in the land. Pursue out of Allah's favor, go make money, go continue in your studies, go back to your families, do whatever you like to do to pursue Allah's favor. وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And continue to remember Allah a lot, so you may succeed. And then an incident is mentioned when the Prophet ﷺ was giving a sermon and the Muslims were not yet educated enough to understand the etiquette of the sermon. And so Allah says, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا when they saw trade and business, they saw some, some, some caravan go by that was making a lot of noise while the khutbah was going on, they ran towards it and they left you there standing. وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا you know, it's amazing that Allah mentions distraction, lahu, entertainment, business. That's what you left the Friday prayer for. Today, you don't even have to get up to leave it. You could just turn on your mobile device and you could just check your Facebook status while khutbah is going on and you've left. You've abandoned the, the station of the Prophet ﷺ that you're supposed to live by. وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا You know, in فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا they, they rushed towards it. They poured towards it. And they broke off and infidad in Arabic actually is used for when a glass shatters. Like the image of someone breaking the spirit of the Friday prayer is like glass shattering. It's supposed to be staying together, you know? And it hurts when glass shatters. And it can't be put back together. It's like irreparable damage. It's so serious. But what is this Friday prayer instruction doing here? And then he says, Wallahu khayru raziqin and Allah is the best provider. And the, and the only instruction for the Friday prayer in the entire Quran, right here. That's it. This is no other place. And here Allah says, Allah is the best of all providers. What in the world? What Allah has done is something so remarkable. The first two passages have now been summed up in this one last passage. Incredible. One of the greatest failings of the, of the previous nation that was given the book was they were asked to observe their Sabbath. They were asked to observe the day of Saturday as a day of observance, a day in which they would leave worldly affiliation and worldly aspirations behind and they would only worship Allah. And they weren't able to do so. Surah Al-A'raf describes that they even they, they were too tempted to continue their businesses on the Saturday. So they tried to go around the, you know, they, they find a way around the, 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 that day and make their money. Now, Allah has given not us, He didn't give us all of Saturday. He didn't give us all of Friday. He gave us an hour or two of the Friday. And He said, I've given you much, much, much less. It's a favor of Allah that He gives to whoever He wants. And now you, that few hours, you better leave the world behind. The world means nothing during the hours of the Friday prayer. 
And as a matter of fact, it's called the day of gathering because it's a simulation for what is going to happen on Judgment Day. Allah will call, people will come out of their graves and they will gather to the call of Allah. And that simulation happens every single Friday when the entire community gathers to hear the word of Allah and prays together. We're actually being reminded of our resurrection every single Friday. Remember the Jewish community was reprimanded in the middle passage of the surah and they were told you run away from death and the resurrection is coming and you're going to be brought before your master. We can't forget that because Friday prayer is there. Because we have to go stand in front of Allah every Friday prayer. We're being we're this mock rehearsal for resurrection. SubhanAllah, that's the purpose of the Friday prayer. But that's how this passage connects to the one before it. What about this passage's relationship with the first passage in which we were told that the Prophet purifies and gives revelation, you know, he recites the revelations, he recites the miraculous ayat, he purifies, he teaches the law and the wisdom. Now we're learning the purpose of the Friday prayer. The Friday prayer, the remembrance of Allah is those four things. The khatib, the sermon giver is supposed to recite the ayat of Allah. You know, he's supposed to, by doing so, cleanse people. This coming together cleanses all of us. It teaches us the laws of Allah, the, the do's and don'ts that Allah has given us. And it, it, it endows us with wisdom. Every time we attend the Friday prayer, it's the responsibility of all of us to try to internalize the wisdom that's being given. And what a huge responsibility it is to give the Friday sermon and to give the wisdom from the Book of Allah and to give the ayat so they can purify minds of people, the thoughts of people, the attitudes of people, the emotions of people. That's what the purpose of the Friday prayer is. So this is actually in a nutshell, if the Friday prayer is given its due, it's like the Ummah is on course. They're doing what they're supposed to. And the state of our Friday prayer will be a very good indication of the state of the Ummah. And because the state of the Sabbath of the previous nation was a, basically a, a damning indication of the state of their affairs, where they stood before Allah. That is the essence of Surah Al-Jumu'ah. How the abstract idea of purification and cleansing and wisdom has been personified and been given this incredible concrete form of the congregation of the Friday prayer. Some of you say, and I'm going to conclude with this, but just a commentary on this. Some of us say, well, the, the Friday prayer in my masjid is pretty boring. I don't like it. Oh, the guy has a heavy accent. Or it's, it's such a long khutbah. I just go towards the end. There's life in accounting we learn, like last in, first out, right? There's people that do that for the Friday prayer. They'll, they'll be the last one to come in, first one to get out. They'll park on the street, not in the parking lot because they want to get stuck behind anybody. They might even pray at the exit, join the second rakah. Maybe they catch one sajda or something. Man, I'm done. I got... No, 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 no. You you forgot why the Friday prayer exists. It doesn't exist because you, you have some deep rooted guilt inside you that I didn't at least come and touch the masjid or something. You're supposed to leave the world behind. That's the spirit of it. You're supposed to reconnect with the word of Allah. That's the spirit of it. Come early to the masjid. Pray the, you know, recite Quran. Remember Allah. Leave business aside. Come an hour early. Come an hour and a half early. Let that be a time for meditation and prayer and rak'at and just sit there, recite Surah Al-Kahf. Do something. But that, that peace that you will get out of the Friday prayer, the residual effects of it will be there until the next Friday. It'll keep you going until the next Friday. That should be a time that's it's just between, that's you and Allah time. That is you and Allah time. If you can't make any other time, if you're so busy with everything else, this is the one time you have no excuse to be busy. I tell you, now we have a chance to come before Allah willingly. Willingly. A day is coming for all of us. We're going to have to come before Allah whether we like it or not. So let's prepare ourselves by willingly coming to Allah, happily coming to Allah. And so we are happy to receive Allah on the Day of Judgment when He calls us. Because it will be a, a, as pleasant an experience as us coming to the Friday prayer. May Allah Azza wa Jal unite us all before Allah in the most beautiful of gatherings. And may Allah Azza wa Jal make all of our Friday prayers the most blessed of occasions throughout our entire lives. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.